out for uh, submitting their questions in the Q and A session in, in section, and we'll consider the questions at the end of the session. So it's my pleasure to go for the ne uh, our next speaker, uh, uh, our chair of uh, this meeting, uh, Dr. Anafisa Abdul Hafiz. Dr. Anafisa Abdul Hafiz, she is known for everybody. She is medical oncology consultant in National Guard the Hospital Riyadh, and she is the director of the Survivor Program, and she's associate professor at King Saud University. Dr. Anafisa, she will give us interesting talk about update and treatment of her two positive breast cancer. Dr. Anafisa, please. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, good morning. Um, thank you, Mervet, for the kind introduction. So my talk today is about the advances in management of uh, HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. Um, so we know that um, HER2 uh, positive disease um, till three decades ago, patients who are having this diagnosis, this was terrible diagnosis and it was like word of death. But why is that? Because HER2 protein, when it is found in the cancer cells, it means that it's fueling the growth of the tumor. So rapid uh, progression of the cancer cells, uh, very poor uh, PFS, and of course, very poor overall survival. Since God, there's improvement in the um, anti-HER2 medication. Actually, there's very rapid improvement. So having all, um, all what we have in now help us a lot in managing those those patients. And um, most importantly, the, those medications now are available in different stages. For example, we have anti HER2 in the metastatic setting, and then we have them in the adjuvant setting and new adjuvant setting. So this enabled the oncologist to uh, inhibit, actually prolong inhibition of uh, HER2 pathway. So as I mentioned, there was a rapid revolution in the anti HER2. Uh, we do remember that, um, um, so we heard about uh, HER2 for the first time in 1998, and when at that time trastuzumab was uh, approved for HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. Then after a few, few years later, uh, trastuzumab was uh, introduced and approved for HER2 positive disease uh, with no negative. And then after that, in 2007, there was um, discovery of the first TKI that inhibited HER2, which was labetinib. Shortly then, drastuzumab was uh, approved uh, again uh, as an indication for early HER2 positive disease, i.e. without lymph node metastasis. We cannot forget 2012, the presentation of Kilopatra. I think many of us attended that presentation. It was huge achievement for patients who are having HER2 metastatic breast cancer, significant BFS, significant overall survival. And then came um, uh, TDM1 in the metastatic setting. Very soon came the Catherine trial uh, in the adjuvant setting. So um, many medication help the patient and the oncologist on controlling the disease. So um, we can say there are three categories of anti HER2. The first one that we are fami very familiar with is uh, monoclonal antibody. We, are, we can say trastuzumab, uh, pertuzumab, and currently medrizuximab. And we have uh, um, antibody um, drug conjugate like TDM1, trastuzumab, deroxetan, and recently we have uh, trastuzumab, decarbamazine. And then um, we have the TDM1, as I mentioned, and sorry, we have the TKI that inhibit HER2, which is labatinib, neratinib, and tocatinib. So what about HER2 selective TKI? Uh, NARA trial, this was uh, the first trial that um, studied an, um, um, uh, anti-HER2 um, uh, TKI that inhibit anti-HER2 in combination with chemotherapy. So neratinib was used in combination in, uh, with capcitabine in a NALA trial. It was phase three randomized trial. Patients were um, they enrolled around 600 
patient. The patient were enrolled one-to-one, -one, sorry, the group received uh, labatinib plus capsitabine. So neratinib dose was 240 and labatinib dose was 1,250. The capsitabine dose was different in the two arms because as we know, the severe toxicity uh, of the um, combination of neratinib with capsitabine. The primary end point was overall survival and PFS secondary uh, point was PFS and overall response rate and duration of response and clinical benefit rate. And they look at the CNS, uh, also the intervention uh, um, intervention of patients who are having brain metastasis. So patients were strat stratified by um, um, number of uh, previous anti her 2 uh, visceral disease, having visceral disease or no, uh, and the her hormonal status and geographic distribution. So looking at the uh, PFS, there was around two months improvement in PFS, but unfortunately there was no improvement in overall survival. So uh, the good thing that there was improvement in intervention of CNS metastasis. So when they look at that, any kind of intervention, either radiation, surgery, or changing of systemic disease, uh, the number of intervention in uh, the arm of the, um, um, uh, um, sorry, neratinib was better than the number of patients who use capsatabine with labatinib. So it does penetrate the brain, it does uh, cause some kind of improvement in CNS metastasis. So what about the toxicity? We know that the combination of neratinib and capsitabine, both of them, each, one, each, each medication per se has its own GI toxicity. So when they combine together, definitely the GI toxicity will be multiplied. So that is why they give um, uh, capsitabine in a smaller dose, uh, not like the um, lapatinib arm. So it's mainly GI toxicity, and number one toxicity is a diarrhea. Uh, what about um, anti-diarrhea prophylaxis? It was given like a standard of care uh, immediately, um, given to the patient along with the, with the medication. But unfortunately, in spite of that, around 25% developed grade three uh, diarrhea. So the limiting factor of this combination is the GI toxicity and the diarrhea. So what about other, um, other TKIs um, that inhibit HER2? So tocotinib. Tocotinib is, uh, is another uh, TKI, but what about it? It's in, inhibit HER2, HER1 her and HER2, and EGFR as well. But it has less toxicity, less inhibition, good inhibition to EGFR, but less toxicity, and it has the, the um, it has the ability to uh, uh, penetrate CNS, and it is uh, well tolerated uh, regarding the side effect. So tocotinib was tested in HER2 um, uh, climb study. This HER2 climb study, and this was randomized controlled trial, and one, one, 155 155 uh, uh, countries participated. 15 countries participated in that, and the number of sites were 155. So uh, patients who are having HER2 positive disease, metastatic disease, who used um, at least minimum of two lines of um, anti-HER2 in the metastatic setting. So um, the good, there are many unique things in this trial. Number one, that this medication had been used in patients who are having 100% uh, of the patient receive the standard of care which means that they receive Herceptin, Pertuzumab in the first line, and TDM1 is the second line. So 100% of the patient receive Pertuzumab, 100% of the patient receive TDM1. So definitely tocotinib was used in the second line, and in some patient was, sorry, third line, some patient fourth and fifth line. So it was given a dose of 300 combined with Trastuzumab and Capsitabine, and the other group received placebo plus Trastuzumab and Capsitabine. Primary endpoint was BFS, and secondary endpoint was overall survival BFS. And they look at the, uh, the, the overall response, sorry, the overall survival in PFS in patients who are having brain metastasis. The other good thing about this trial also, they look 
they, they enroll patients who are having brain metastasis. Not only patients who are having stable brain metastasis, um, they, they enroll patients who are having stable disease after treatment, patients who are progressing after treatment, but they don't need um, uh, active treatment at that time. And they enroll patients who are having uh, active disease just at the time of diagnosis, but they also they don't need um, urgent intervention. And they record MRI just before um, enrollment. So they look at the patient by number of, of anti-HER2, previous anti-HER2, which was received, uh, site of metastasis, um, hormonal status, and uh, geographic uh, distribution. So we can see that the, the um, criteria or characteristic were well balanced in the two arms. So what about the BFS? There was almost two month difference in the BFS. So uh, the BFS, median BFS was 7.8 in the tocotinib arm, while it was 5.6 in the uh, placebo arm. The hazard ratio was 0.5, and this was translated into 46% reduction in the, in, in the uh, uh, risk of disease progression. At one year, the BFS was 33, while it was 12% in the placebo arm. Uh, looking at the subgroup analysis, we can say all the, all the patients, irrespective of hormonal status, um, site of metastasis, number of anti hers 2 all of them, they did respond uh, to, they benefit, responded and benefit from ducatinib. What about overall survival? Again, there was overall survival benefit. Um, at two years, 45% were alive, or uh, at two, uh, two years, 27% were alive in the placebo arm. So very significant, very significant overall survival benefit. And the hazard ratio was 0 0.6, and this was, um, and there was 34 reduction in the risk of death. So very significant PFS and very significant overall survival. What about patients who are having brain metastasis? As I mentioned, they, they allowed all type of brain metastasis. So again, there was the same improvement in PFS, the same like patient who doesn't have brain metastasis. So patient with or without brain metastasis had this, achieved the same uh, PFS. So the p-value was very significant and there was 52% reduction in the risk of disease progression on those population. What about the toxicity profile? We can see that um, it's comparable between the two arms. It was mainly grade one and grade two, grade three and four were very minimal, as we can see. Mainly it is GI toxicity, as I mentioned, and there was elevation in the uh, liver function test. What about the future direction of tocatinib? What, what, is, the next, what is the next step after this uh, significant improvement in PFS and overall survival in the patient who are heavily pretreated? So now ongoing trial looking at benefit of the tocotinib, plus capcitabine and trastuzumab in patients who are having leptomeningeal disease. We know patients with leptomeningeal disease, we don't have a standard treatment. We don't know how to deal with them. So the trial is on patients who are having um, um, leptomeningeal disease, HER2 positive, and uh, they include patients who are having performance zero to three, and um, they're planning to enroll 30 patients. Primary endpoint overall survival, secondary endpoint safety BFS response rate in the patient who are having CNS disease and quality of life, of course. So what about HER2 targeted ADC or uh, antibody drug conjugate? So this is trastuzumab deruxetan. It has high antibody ratio. So uh, the number of antibodies that um, um, attached to the medication is very high and it has a stable linker, uh, it is very permeable. So what is the idea behind that? The medication, um, the combination goes into the cancer cells, um, cause cell death, and then because it's highly permeable, go outside and kill the next uh, cell um, and, and, and so on. So they look at this in the DESTINY trial. So DESTINY trial was open label, multi-center randomized uh, phase two trial. Uh, Destiny was a trial of two parts. Part one was mainly to decide uh, the pharmaco about the pharmacokinetic. So the phase, in the phase one, 
they use different doses. They use 5.4, 5, uh, 6.4, and 7.4 milligram per kg. And then part two, they look, they continued on 5.4 per kg. And at the same time, the, the analysis was on the patient who received 5.4. So the enrollment criteria was HER2 positive disease, uh, good performance, zero to one. And again, they allowed patient with brain metastasis, but having a stable disease. So primary um, end point was overall response rate. Secondary end, secondary end point was uh, 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 sorry, uh, disease control rate and overall response rate, overall survival, pharmacokinetic, and safety. So how did they uh, stratify patient? Again, geographic region and um, number of HER2 used before site of metastatic disease, site of metastatic disease. So what about the response? Again, this is one of the landmark trial in HER2 um, metastatic breast cancer. So we can see obviously most of the patient, most of the patient achieved um, response. So overall response rate was around 6% and in the updated, um, uh, updated um, um, result of this trial, recently it was higher than that. It was almost uh, near to 70%. What about disease control rate? 97% had disease control and um, medium disease uh, uh, control was 15 months and the median, median time to um, response was one and a half months. So very significant improvement in disease control. So again, looking at the, in the subgroup analysis, looking at the patient uh, with different stratifications, um, different uh, performance status, as I mentioned, zero to one only were enrolled in this. All of them achieved uh, some improvement and they benefited from uh, the medication. So um, again, what about the survival in the, with the deruxetan? So median BFS was 16 months and 24 patients who were having brain metastasis, their uh, BFS was in very, uh, effect even in patients who are having brain metastasis. What about overall survival? At the time of the analysis, at the time of the cutoff and the analysis of this trial, um, the initial time was it was uh, I said there's a new update it, it is around two years okay so what about the toxicity profile again most of them as we can see grade two and grade uh, grade one and two grade three was uh, very very minimal so uh, the main um, the main effect of this medication the main toxicity the limitation of this drug is patient who are having, you cannot use this medication, patient who are having interstitial lung disease. So it was a major toxicity, uh, around 17 out of 20 patients, they required glucocorticosteroid. Seven, seven patients um, uh, recovered, but two patients were still, this is a time of the cutoff, uh, four um, deaths happened on, uh, on the trial. So the recommendation was to screen patient at the time of enrollment, monitor the patient very close, uh, closely for the um, for the side effect and intervene at as early as possible. So after the destiny, the result of destiny trial, trastuzumab deruxetan had been approved by WHO. The recommendation was to use 5.4 kilogram every three weeks. Monitor CBC and uh, um, cardiac uh, by doing cardiac function, um, and and then um, you manage. They, they put the recommendation how to manage the toxicity when it happened. So map is a new medication. This is, um, again, uh, one of the novel therapy, but um, with modest improvement in PFS. So um, the combination, we know that there, this is a drug, um, antibody drug conjugate. Um, the engineered part, the FC part, engineered to increase the immune response of anti-HER2. So um, this is the idea behind this medication in very brief. So it's the idea, the combination will help um, or in a, activate the immune response of anti-HER2. So it has more affinity to CD16A and less affinity to CD32, uh, which is inhibitory. 
Megatuximab was studied in SOFIA trial. So it was a randomized phase three trial. Uh, the first arm, uh, so patients were randomized into two arms. They enrolled ar around 500 patients. The first arm received Megatuximab plus chemotherapy. The second arm received Megatuximab plus uh, sorry, trastuzumab plus uh, chemotherapy. The chemotherapy was left for investigator choice, was according to investigator choice, and it was mainly capcitabine, ribulene, gemcitabine, or venerolabine. Primary endpoint overall survival, BFS. Secondary was uh, BFS by investigator assessment. Uh, there was um, exploratory analysis. They look at the patient who are ha with CD16 uh, um, and CD32. Uh, we know there is polymorphic patients who are having polymorphism of this uh, allele. So those patients uh, were uh, special according to the trial. So there was mild improvement. It was statistically significant, but unfortunately it was less than one month. So even with the, with the um, follow-up, there was no significant improvement. The p-value was a little bit uh, better, but still the difference was only one month in PFS. The overall survival data is still premature, but when the exploratory analysis patient who are having a polymorphism of that allele, they saw some sort of, of improvement. So, but um, still this is early and uh, further trials are needed to, to make sure of that. So what about the uh, uh, overall survival? Again, I said modest improvement in overall survival but it was ma mainly marked in patients who are having polymorphism of, of, of that allele or genotype. So um, safety, the medication was safe. There is no new toxicity uh, data emerged from in this trial. The only thing that it was comparable to pertuzumab, the only thing that happened in this trial, there was increase in the incidence of uh, infusion reaction. What about immunotherapy? This was tested. Atezolizumab was tested uh, in a K2 trial. Atezo was used with TDM1, and the other arm, they, they received Atezo plus placebo. So um, it was a phase uh, two trial. Patients stayed on therapy till disease progression. They look also at patients who are having PDL1, so they classified patients into two categories, less than 1% and above 2%. Primary endpoint was PFS, secondary was overall survival, and it and the, um, was exploratory analysis looking at the patient with BDL1 level. So uh, there was, it was not a statistically significant improvement in overall survival or PFS. There was no actual overall survival benefit. PS, PFS was a little bit better in patients who are having positive BDL1. So um, it, the, the combination was safe, but of course, grade three and four was uh, toxicity was higher in the patient uh, who received immunotherapy in combination with TDM1. Uh, severe adverse event were seen in 29% of uh, TISO arm, while it was seen only on 15% of the placebo arm. Uh, the toxicity was mainly in uh, thrombocytopenia and elevation of uh, liver function test and biraxia. So um, this is regarding immunotherapy in combination with anti-HER2. We know that ongoing trial looking at CDK4-6 uh, combined with um, uh, anti-HER2, but we don't have the result uh, uh, out yet. And this is PATINA trial. Thank you.